I was that degenerate that wanted to be a celebrity. And now that I'm a celebrity, it's like I miss kind of being a degenerate sometimes because that was the funnest times of my life. professional skateboarder, entrepreneur, and lifestyle specialist. The life that I'm living now was an impossible life for me when I was younger. Imagine me at like 12, 13, like I want to be pro, I want to be the youngest pro, I wanted to just be a star skater. I like to make the impossible possible. Take on challenges that some people may seem impossible, but I may see it as like, you know, great adventure. I had like hitchhiked around my birthday in December and then made it here by like January. I went to Costa Mesa first where I got to Element and was like, yo, I'm here. They're like, yo, what the fuck are you doing here? Your mom is calling here and she's going crazy and you popping up here, like, we can't have that. She, you wanna, she's talking about suing us and I'm gonna get arrested. I'm like, fuck it. Like, you know what I mean? Let me get some product, let me get some boards, let me get some money. I'm about to go skate. Like, she ain't coming to California. She can't even afford to get here. They wasn't gonna let me stay in Costa Mesa because they harboring like a fugitive and shit. Juvenile fugitive. I got a ride from my best friend, Pepe Martinez, rest in peace. Him and a few other dudes drove me into San Francisco. They dropped us off in a tenderloin. So everything kind of worked out pretty dope. My mom reacted like any mom would react. She reacted crazy, you know, intimidating. But I'm my mom's child, so I'm like, hey, you gotta do a little bit more than that, you know what I mean? Coming into this crib right here, um, this is the spot right here, yo. This was like the projects of the TL. Everybody in this building that skated was everybody that I always wanted to meet. When I got into the building, they was like, who is this dude? And they was like, yo, that's Lil Stevie from Philly. And everybody was like, oh shit, you in California? And I got accepted like that night and I was just one of the boys. A lot of people from the East Coast don't get accepted by the San Francisco skaters. So it's like, oh, if you go out there, they might not like you, or they might focus your board, or they might vibe you. And I'm like, nigga, I'm from Philly, man, fuck them. You know, I go out there like, I don't give a fuck. As long as I make it out there, I'm straight. And Pat Washington, he, he told me I could stay at his house. Um, right when we was like pulling up to Pepe's house, ironically, Pat Washington was just standing on a corner. And my man Pepe was like, nigga, Pat Washington right there. And I'm like, oh shit, bet. Walked up to him and was like, yo, what's up? And he was like, who you? And I'm like, uh, what's up, I'm Stevie, was good. He was like, what you doing out here? I'm like, yo, you said I can stay at your house. He was like, nigga, I'm homeless. I'm like, you homeless? He was like, yeah, I don't, I don't got no house. He was like, I can show you where to put your clothes at. You know what I'm saying? And I can show you where we can kick it at. And we just gotta find a place to stay every night. It's called, it's called couch surfing. You might not even have a place to stay or that couch might pop up at the, the last minute. Or like, it's like four of y'all and y'all trying to find a place to stay, you go to your homie house and he like, look, only two can stay, you know? And yeah. either you want to be like, all right, well, I'm staying the night, or the four of y'all is really just like out the rest of the night skating, sleeping on a bench for a couple hours, sun could pop up, try to figure out how we going to get to the spot to get our clothes, to change clothes. It was a good time in my life, and I, I definitely appreciate every, every second of it because it made me who I am. I wouldn't change it for nothing. Spot, it's a new spot. <laughs> What's up, yeah? I respect y'all niggas for, for holding this spot down. What's up, Dill? How you doing? What's up, Chris? As skaters, you find routes into the city. Skating through the city, you get to be the city. You know, watching out for the cracks, skating through the cars, hearing the horns, skating through crackheads. This was our route coming down O'Farrell, 
going through all of this, maybe stop at the liquor store, maybe meet somebody right here, they coming out the building. This is before cell phones, Instagram. It's before all of that stuff. It's just like word of mouth communicating, telephone calls, meet us here, everybody meet up, go skate. That part of my life changed me from just being a Philly dude to like, yo, I'm a part of Frisco too. And I always had Philadelphia and San Francisco that, that made me who I am. This is the famous Embarcadero. It sucks that it's, it's nothing left. It's like, see that? That's like a shadow of what used to be here. All of the skate tricks was learned here. It was filmed, sent out into the world. And if you could make it here, then you can make it in skating. And that was my dream to come to Embarcadero and make a name for myself, get on a really dope company, turn pro one day, and be famous. But when I came here, you couldn't skate here no more. You get chased by the cops, $200 tickets. Same thing that happened at Love Park, but it happened here first. So everybody migrated to a new spot. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over to Pair 7, and that's, that's where I got down. Seven was called the new spot. This became the new Embarcadero. And this spawned my career, Carl Watson's career, Rob Welsh's career, a lot of people's career that didn't get a chance to get a, a thorough run in Embarcadero. Everybody would hang out here at Pier 7 and skate here all day, film, take photos, go back into the city. So it's like skateboard and lifestyle. Like I live my life that way. My money got low, it got real, it got real bad, and times was tough. And that's when I really stepped my game up, skateboard-wise, and I stepped it up here at Pier 7. Like, this exact place is like, fuck it. I only got $200 left. I sent my mom the last bit of my money. She talking about come home and get a job. I'm like, fuck that shit. I'm about to skate and do that. whatever I need to do, whatever trick I need to learn, I need to learn it. And I'm gonna do this shit, I'm gonna get on the best sponsor that I possibly can. And I did the trick on that ledge right there that still has never been done to this day. When it was done, it was so original that it was able to give me the value that I wanted. And that is one of the tricks that sparked my whole career. This store has been important to me and to the skateboard community and to Plaza Skating because without a store like this, the skateboarding message wouldn't even get to Philadelphia. It's through videos, through photos, through innovation and all of that stuff was going on here. You know, I always came to FTC and seen all of the pros on the wall, imagining my board up on the wall one day. You don't really get street trophies for the shit that you do, but that is a trophy on the wall. Remember if it didn't that? deserve to be up there, it wouldn't be up there. Trust just, me, yeah, yeah, that's the honor right there. Yeah, FTC is DGK. DGK is FTC. It wouldn't be no DGK without FTC. Money try right here. DGK is what me and my homies was called when we was little kids. Dirty ghetto kids. At that time, 2001, 2002, I had an opportunity to do my first company. The first thing that popped in my mind was DGK. To have a company called Dirty Ghetto Kids automatically seemed like a black company. I was super edgy and wild at that time anyway. Close to 15 years later, it's a, a premium brand that reflects everything that I've done in my career. Shit just took off. This is a culture that has been so untapped and so lawless that there's no boundaries to what we can do and what we can't do. This was an old bank. I don't know if you can see. The vault is over there and stuff, but we pretty much flipped the bank that was on Fairfax. KO Corp is a distribution company. There's four brands, DGK, 
Expedition, Organica, and Gold Wheels. All of the brands have a lifestyle appeal to it. DGK is an like inner city brand. It wasn't until I realized what I had at my distribution company with my partners, we had a brand that stood for something that was new. And seeing how we all grew up together, being able to bottle it into a brand and then being able to sell it to our, our fans across the world. Skaters, we can identify if you're original or not. Your personality like reflects your style, like the way he do his tricks and stuff. Nobody's going to do it like him. He's original. Everybody's style is different. Yeah. And I love being a skater. They still having fun, you know what I mean? And I can't front, yo. I lost that. I lost that for a while. I raced to get to the top, and it just left little voids in my life that I knew that, you know, at, at one point in my life, like, damn, I wasn't like this. And then I started looking back and remembering how it was when I was couch surfing or just walking around the city, imagining how things could be. I didn't think I was ever gonna do anything. Growing up, the way I lived my life, like this far in my life, I thought was never really promised. I never really thought that I would be this age, this successful. I'm from one of the dirtiest, roughest parts of Philadelphia and the dreams is to make it out, no matter how you do it. And I just so happened by doing it by skateboarding, nobody thought it would ever happen. Nobody even really supported it. Like if it was like I played basketball or I was doing something popular for my neighborhood, but it don't matter. My, what I do now and how I've done it was actually able to change the culture and shift the culture our way. So it's respected now. If my mom or my dad or my friends or my neighborhood or my community or my race didn't get my goal, I did and I went for it. DGK is my legacy, is what I stand for. The kids know about the legacy, the brand, and they love it. They don't have to, but they do. And I'm psyched.